now that we have a common emitter amplifier, let's look at the last two cases, common base and common collector amplifier. Objective here is the same as before. I want to draw the small signal model for the transistor amplifier in the last two configurations. And then I want to come up with a simplified model with definite equivalent, also known as the two-port model for the common base and common collector amplifier. The circuit we'll start with is the same one as before. I'll design my transistor amplifier to bias it in the middle of the active region. Here I'm choosing a Q point of 6 volts PCE and 6 milliamps. I'm going to inject an AC signal on top of that using coupling capacitors. First, let's look at a common base amplifier. With common base, I take the base, tie it to ground. Input goes at the emitter, output goes at the collector. Let's draw the small signal model. My plus 12 volt source becomes 0 volts because that's 12 plus 0 sine omega t. And since this is AC analysis, ignore the 12, the constant. Start at the input right here. I go to R sub E, takes it to ground. Here's the emitter, here's the base. Uh, emitter goes to R sub F, takes it to the base. Base is tied to ground through your coupling capacitor. R1 and R2 are shorted to ground, so they don't really matter. Emitter to collector is a current amplifier. And I sub B is actually this direction. I then have R sub C going to ground, and here's your output. Redrawing it to be a little bit cleaner. This is the small signal model for a common base amplifier. I now want to convert that to its two port model, the Thevenin equivalent. To draw the Thevenin equivalent, I'll run a couple tests. Do the test on the bottom circuit to find the different parameters. Do the same test on the top circuit. I got a sign error there. IB is going up. And I get the different parameters. First, let's find RN. To find RN, you short V out. That sets this term to zero. The impedance looking in is then VN. Do the same thing on this circuit. Sort the output, find the input impedance, and it's not real obvious. So let's do a trick. Let's apply one volt source to the input, measure the input current from V equals IR. I find the voltage and current under the resistance. The current at the input is this current, is one volt over R sub E, plus this current, one volt over R sub F, plus this current. Since IB is actually negative, current through this guy, current source is actually to the right, it will be beta over R sub F. From V equals IR, the resistance must then be V over I, since V is 1, is 1 over I. The sum of the, res the inverses of the resistances inverted is the input impedance, which is actually the equation for resistors in parallel. So it's R sub E in parallel with R sub F in parallel with R sub F over beta. So there's your first equation. Next, let's find AI. To find AI, let's set the output to 1 volt. Measure the input voltage, and that's AI. Do the same over here. Set the output to 1 volt. Measure the input, and it's not real obvious. But there is an answer. If you can guess the answer, you can avoid some analysis. So let's get zero. Zero is a nice, easy number to guess. If this is zero volts, this is zero amps, this is beta times zero, still zero, zero balances. Turns out zero is the answer. A sub n equals zero. Third, let's find R out. To find R out, I short the input. Measure the resistance at the output. By shorting the input, that sets this term to zero, and the output just sees R out. And same here. I'll short V in. That sets this current to zero. 
which sets this current to zero, all I see is R sub C. So the output impedance is R sub C. Finally, let's find A out. To find A out, I set the input to one volt. Measure the output, the output voltage is A out. Do the same up here. Set the input to one volt, measure the output voltage. If the input is one volt, that current is one over RF. This current is beta over RF. The out is then A out. The out is plus beta over RF times R sub C. Plugging in numbers, what you get for your circuit is actually you know, plus 115 Vn. Same gain as before with the positive sign. The advantage of a common base amplifier is it has a very low input impedance. Useful if you have a sensor, such as a phonograph, if you remember what those are, that needs a low input impedance to operate. Third circuit to look at is a common collector amplifier. Common collector, you take the collector, tie it to ground. Input goes at the base, output goes at the emitter. So let's try the small signal model. I've got my input goes to the base. I've got R sub F, takes you to the emitter. Input goes to ground through R2, goes to ground through R1. Uh, let's see, at the emitter, I've got R sub E to ground. And then I've got a current amplifier, beta times IB, taking you to the collector. And I sub E is in this direction. Redrawing it a little bit cleaner, there's the small signal model for a common collector amplifier. Let's kind of come up with the two port model for the common collector amplifier then. I'm going to do four tests. Do the test on the bottom circuit to find the different parameters. Do the same test on the top circuit. First, let's find the input impedance. To do that, I'll take the output and short it. That clears this term. The impedance looking in then is Rn. So let's take the output, short it, measure the impedance looking in. And again, it's not real obvious. So let's apply a, a test signal of one volt. Let's see how much current I get. The input current is going to be 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus uh, let's see, this point is ground 1 over RF I guess it was obvious that's three resistors in parallel Rn is R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with RF Next, let's find AI. To find that term, I set the output to one volt and measure the voltage looking in. Doing the same up here. If that's one volt, what you get is essentially voltage division. This right here is one volt. These two are in parallel with RF, gives you voltage divider. A sub i is R1 in parallel with R2 over RF plus R1 in parallel with R2, a voltage division. This is the one where AI is not equal to zero. Third test, let's find R out. To find R out, short the input, that gets rid of this term. The impedance at the output then is R out. Let's short the input, look at the output. If the input is ground, um, it's not real obvious. 
So again, let's apply a test signal of one volt and see what you get. The current coming in is going to be one over RF. That's this current. This current through that capacitor, one over R sub C plus beta. If this current is one over RF, this current is beta times it. When V equals IR, the resistance is then 1 over I, since V is 1. Take the three inverses inverted, we get the resistance. Essentially, that's the equation for the three resistors in parallel. R out is R sub F in parallel with R sub C in parallel with R sub F over beta. Last case, let's find A out. To find A out, make the input 1 volt, measure the output voltage. Doing the same up here, make the input 1 volt, see so what you get. If this is 1 volt, um, hmm. let's do a voltage node equation. This current plus that current plus that current has to add to 0. I get V out minus 1 over RF plus 1 over R sub C plus V out over R sub C plus this current is beta times RF plus beta times V out minus 1 over R sub F equals 0. That result is the output gain is beta times R sub C in parallel with R sub F in parallel with R sub F over beta over R sub F. It'll be less than 1. Plugging in numbers for the circuit that we've been looking at when connected as a common collector configuration, you get the following circuit. But this one's a little more complicated to handle because the input is a function of the output, the output's a function of the input. Typically, I would couple a common collector amplifier and cascade it with a common emitter amp amplifier right before it. If you do that, you've got the common emitter amplifier that we looked at before, here on the left, here on the left, cascade it with a common collector amplifier, find the two-port equivalent. Again, you do the same tricks as before. The input impedance is take the output, short it. If this is zero, this is zero. Um, <laughs> well, pretty clearly, the input impedance is 928 ohms, and there's no voltage coming back. To find the gain or the output impedance, if I short the input, it makes this zero. Uh, apply a test voltage at the output, measure the current coming in. If this is 1 volt, this becomes 0.527 times 1, tells you V2, tells you this current, this voltage. Given the voltage difference, I can find the input current. The output resistance is then going to be 1 minus 0.9865 V2 over 8.5 ohms. And 1 over I out is R out. And the output gain is make the input 1 volt. If that's 1 volt, I know this voltage. I can solve. What you wind up with is the following. Cascade a common emitter amplifier, common collector amplifier. You get a nice simple circuit. The input sees 928 ohm load. The output sees 11 ohm load and some gain. That's the purpose of the common collector amplifier. It has a low output impedance. So in summary, we've got three amplifiers. Common emitter amplifier is used for high gain. That's the staple of your amplifiers. When you have a multi-stage amplifier, they're usually common emitter amplifiers cascaded. Each one gives you a gain. Common base amplifiers are used as the first stage. If you have a sensor that requires a low input impedance, it can't drive a large impedance. Use a common base amplifier for the first stage. 
Otherwise, use common emitter amplifier. Common collector amplifier is used at the last stage. If I'm driving a load that has a low impedance, say an 8-ohm speaker, I use a common collector amplifier as the last stage. 